Hello, my name is Rain, and welcome to my channel, where I discuss Fantasy Formula 1. It is time to talk about the Mexico Grand Prix, so today we're going to discuss what happened in Cota, and what my team is likely to look like in Mexico. Are you ready? Let's just go. So, let me just start off by apologizing for not posting earlier in the week. It's, it's been a one of those weeks, you know. Uh, I wanted to post this, you know, Cota reaction video and transfer plans earlier on Monday, but I just never got around to it, so... We're doing all of it today, but I promise I will keep the quota portion of this short and only talk about the relevant parts that actually has to do with the Mexican Grand Prix. And then we'll discuss all of the uh, quota stuff that I didn't have time to touch in this video. Uh, tomorrow evening, right? It's Friday today. So tomorrow evening, Saturday, two hours before the deadline i will be live on my channel as always for a deadline stream so deadline stream is back this weekend two hours before the deadline on saturday evening european time uh, afternoon uh, afternoon us time and morning early sunday morning uh, australian time so uh, if you want to join me for that, we can talk more about Kota and all the drama that came from there. But I'm just going to quickly talk about uh, what happened to my team in Kota. And I and did end up playing the 3X, but it was sort of a mixed bag, right? I did, not play, I did end up playing the 3X and I kept Landon Norris, Oscar Piastri, I kept Ferrari, I kept McLaren. I did not make a transfer, right? I kept my entire team as is. And a few of those things were good, right? I kept Ferrari over getting Mercedes in. So that was good. That was something at least. Uh, and then I kept the two McLaren boys. And the reason for that was I could not in good conscience sell Oscar Piastri when he started so far back in the sprint. And I think that was relatively justified. It was slightly underwhelming. He did get stuck uh, a bit in the sprint, but he still got 12 points from the sprint race. And that's definitely a good score in the sprint. What is a good score in the sprint? Well, Science had the highest score at 14 after his climb. Uh, after his climb and P2 finish. Verstappen got 13 points for winning it. And then Piastri was the third highest scorer in the sprint with 12 points. So I definitely take the 12 points there. And I'm happy that I kept Piastri for the sprint race. Now, slightly disappointed in Landon Norris. He could have been P2. That's where I was hoping he would be. Ended up P3 after losing the tires a bit and losing that position to Sainz. But I thought it was fine because I, I assumed there would be a lot of race pace still in the McLaren. And I was excited for sunday and what a sunday it was but it was not a sunday for landon norris and mclaren it was a sunday for ferrari what a weekend for ferrari and congratulations to the leclerc owners out there as well as the science owners really uh and it kind of made the the 3x a bit underwhelming if you watched any of my videos that i posted leading up to the 3x i was discussing that uh, leading up to Kota was for the 3x to be good I was aiming for 40 points on both my assets right and you can see here apart from Leclerc's you know standout 55 pointer 40 points would have been pretty good here and, and I use sort of previous weekends as an example for what what a good score should be you know obviously Verstappen got a 58 pointer here but then the highest scores were around 40 and, and that's where I was hoping uh, McLaren would land and I think they would have landed there if, if they'd just been better. Norris losing so many positions. I mean, we're going to talk about what happened some other time. I think I might make an entire video discussing the drama that was that five-second penalty and between Norris and Verstappen. But regardless of what happened between Norris and Verstappen, I mean, Norris wasn't really close to Leclerc and Sainz after Leclerc took the lead on lap one. Landon Norris losing the lead on lap one again into turn one. And yes, I mean, Max kind of shoved him wide there, but you cannot allow Max Verstappen that space on the inside. So I think that's also on Norris because Norris did get an, actually a good start up until turn one. If Norris had been ahead out of turn one, maybe it would have been different. Um, a lot of pace and, and especially tired deg uh, was, was given advantage to whoever was in front. I mean, we saw with Leclerc. Leclerc was never in doubt after that first corner, literally dominated the rest of the race after not being bothered by other cars but i still think the ferrari looked scarily good and that has definitely put some 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 um, thought in my mind should i sit here with with triple mclaren when ferrari are this good especially considering that ferrari did not bring any upgrades mclaren have brought a bunch of upgrades and mclaren are bringing more upgrades in the following two rounds so i mean it, it could be one of those where just ferrari is good for that race we've seen that multiple times this season 
with the standout maybe being being Monza, right, where they you know weren't the fastest car, but like I'm talking thinking Monaco specifically, where Ferrari were literally unstoppable, or Leclerc in that case were, were literally unstoppable. But I mean, yeah, Ferrari looked really really good. Again, I'm happy I kept uh, Ferrari over Mercedes. Now Mercedes only got 33 points. I'm so sorry if you final fixed Hamilton in. I made an entire video saying you should. But, I mean, look at the Mercedes with hard tires. What they did is just that it ended up being the wrong driver. I cannot believe how unlucky you are if you did that. I'm really sorry. But, like, I, th I feel like my assessment of the situation was correct, right? You can never predict DNFs fully. And, uh, I mean, the Mercedes was really good from the back on those hards. I mean, look what George Russell did. And this is this is mainly in the, in the race. He got 32 points. That's more than both Norris and Piastri got. Uh, starting on those hard tires with that many overtakes and positions gained. And I, I, I mean, Hamilton should have had a similar score, let's be real, um, if, he, if he had not DNF there. So just generally unlucky for a lot of people. The 30-pointer for both Norris and Piastri makes my 3x slightly underwhelming. It is still a blue arrow up, though. I'm up 3,024 places, but I'm well aware that this could be because other people around me just didn't 3x. So that's just the points I got from the 3x. And if they didn't 3x now and they hadn't 3x before, they're going to 3x in Brazil and I could be in big, big, big trouble. So need to get my team right for Brazil specifically if there's a lot of 3x's flying around there. I'm just going to pray and hope that the people I've now passed are people who have already used the 3x. But yeah, I can't really know that, right? So up inside the top 10k feels good at least. It's been a while since I was here. It's been a long climb up after that horrid summer and, and horrid luck. Uh, let's quickly discuss some C tiers before we move on to what my team is like to look like in Mexico. Uh, I stuck with Alex Albon, Frank Colapinto and Valtteri Bottas because I couldn't make any of that moves. I really wanted Liam Lawson, if you remember. But to do that, I had to either sell Oscar Piastri or Ferrari. Now, the selling of Oscar Piastri would have been really good to a science specifically, but also Russell. And I was toying with that idea. And I, again, this is like the bait of F1 Fantasy. If Piastri had just gotten like a P5 finish or a P6 finish in the sprint qualifying, I probably would have sold Piastri for like a science to upgrade Valtteri Bottas to Liam Lawson, right? But because of Oscar Piastri's poor sprint qualifying, he had so much position for points that I thought even if he only performs, you know, above average with a P5 finish in the race, which is like where he ended up, right? Race, P5 finish, 10 points, two overtakes, no positions gained. Like this is kind of what I was expecting him to get in the race, but I was just, I saw how much potential he had in the sprint and he, he got decent points in the sprint, but he just didn't really live up to it, right? So like six points plus 10 plus two, that's what? That's 18 points. I was putting him around 18 points, around 50, like 18, around 16 to 20 points in the main race in my calculations, in my head. But I put the sprint slightly higher, um, expecting him to land on a total of like 36 points maybe, uh, which would have been really, really good if we, you know, if you remember the race results and, and where 36 points would have been on the, on the scale of, of previous sprint weekends. So... If he had been bad in the sprint qualifying, but like not gotten out in Q1, if he'd just been like P6 or P7, somewhere in that range of mediocrity, I think I would have made the switch to either George Russell or uh, uh, or Carlos Sainz. And I think specifically Carlos Sainz, just because of how good Ferrari looked, right? And in that case, I could have also gotten Liam Lawson. And Liam Lawson, my God, I mean... What a race he had. What an introduction. Uh, 20 points in the race alone. And I thought he would be good in the sprint as well. But no, it was 20 points on the sprint. My God. I mean, it really shows how unlucky we were with the Gasly. Like back in, in uh, was it Britain, right? Where he DNF'd off taking all that penalty points and getting starting from the back. When he just, you know, drove it in after the first lap, after the formation lap even, and, and DNF'd. Those positions you know those positions gained uh potentials when the driver has that many penalty points amazing and on this race in particular those that hard to soft that hard to medium strategy just worked so well and at 20 points and, and points in his first race 
in V Card for the year is is truly amazing, and I wish I could have had him. I really, 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 really wanted Lawson in. I just couldn't afford him in uh, without downgrading someone else. And because again, I didn't want to do the Ferrari to Mercedes, and I'm really happy I didn't. That would that's a massive point swing, right? But the fact that if Piastri had just been like P6 or P7, I would have gone to science to get Lawson in over Bottas, and what like that would have been. 12 so 24 points plus another 19 that's like that's 33 points that's a big swing um on basically just piastri messing up in in sq and and me overvaluing that uh i i, I suppose but i didn't think I, I didn't overvalue that great it was just that it turns out that science was that much better i, I was also not expecting science to be on 42 i was expecting science to be also closer to 30. I was, I was expecting this to be the opposite way around. But no, he got P2 in the in the main race as well, um, where I thought maybe Piastri could be P2 in the main race if McLaren's pace are there, but it really wasn't. So, unlucky, I will say. Slightly unlucky. But again, Frank Colapinto, the GOAT of F1 Fantasy, literally will never sell, never sell him. Alex Albon got 11 points from starting far back, even though he had a worse race than, than Franco in, in every way. Valtteri Bottas one point didn't expect much of him anyway and that was my team 348 points up to the top 10k for the first time in a long time uh let's see what my team is likely to look let's see what my plans are for Mexico so this is my team then as you just saw I have 1 million in the bank a total team value after quota of 128.2 million it's getting up there it's getting up there now, there's a bunch of things I could do for Mexico, and I have no idea which it is, right? McLaren are bringing more upgrades. Maybe they will work better. Will Ferrari be the best asset in the game? Ferrari is now also an A-tier asset. Important to note, will not be gaining uh, value at the same rate uh, previously. I'm thinking I should get off triple McLaren, but again, it feels like McLaren could pop up with a 1-2 at any point, and the, one, the times I've sold Norris have been awful for me like truly truly dreadful i do feel like i should sell oscar piastri though right i feel like i should try and get like a leclerc in there because i mean even if the ferrari is is not that good leclerc has been so consistent so far and if the mclaren is struggling at least i do have charlotte claire's points another important thing to mention is that mexico is not as hot of a race and Ferrari have been really good in the hot races this season. Someone who has a team that has been good though is Mercedes. So with I believe it's Lewis Hamilton getting those uh getting those upgrades, the upgraded package and not Russell for Mexico, he could be an option. Not that budget matters this much, but with Lewis Hamilton's DNF, he is now a uh, B-tier asset once again. So this sort of move I, I know it looks crazy to sell ferrari assets but we don't know how good ferrari are going to be in mexico we're going to wait for practice to see but one option could be with my three free transfers to switch to a mercedes build and then upgrade bottas unfortunately because of value increases i cannot afford liam lawson in here but it could be a pure gasly if i wanted to which is just better than the than the show right gasly showed really good pace especially in qualifying now that didn't really translate to the, the the race pace, but if he could do the opposite, there's there's points maybe points to be had there, and, and I mean I just, these these kicks hours are never scoring a point and never getting anything uh, if the season continues like it is, so I could look to do something like this if if the Mercedes looks strong, if the Mercedes and the Ferrari look strong and McLaren doesn't look strong, I could do a full switch, go completely off the McLaren. And, I mean, in this case, I could get something better here. I could maybe get, like, a Kevin Magnussen. The problem with all of this is that this is four moves. And I'm essentially using a minus 10 to get Kevin Magnussen over Valtteri Bottas. I'm essentially using minus 10 to switch C-tier assets. So to switch off my triple McLaren, I would probably need two weekends realistically right i would need the three moves i have now and then the two moves in brazil and then we could get to brazil and mclaren could be the fastest again so i feel like that's my issue is like i can't just 
switch off of McLaren all at once and gain all the value of it. Because part of the value of switching to these cheaper assets is also being upgrading, is also being able to upgrade the back line. And if I can't do that, then I don't know, it feels wrong. What's a realistic move for me then? Well, if McLaren don't look dominant again, and I feel like Piastri and Lando are both sort of underperforming after this break, Maybe it's something with the upgrades. Maybe it's just Max Verstappen pushing Landon Norris off the track. So you kind of have like an extra goated driver trying to ruin your points holes. Because I feel like, like Max would just slam into Norris if it meant he, you know, none of them get points, right? To ensure that he wins. So I feel like this is just kind of like a liability waiting to happen. Like they, Max and Lando are going to crash at some point this season by with the way Max is driving. So I, I'm not really interested in Red Bull Racing at all. Right, Max is making that car work, but Checo isn't. So there's no way I'm I'm picking up a Red Bull Racing anytime soon. I could end up selling like McLaren, McLaren for Mercedes, and in this case, I could maybe keep one of the McLaren points. Maybe I keep Landon Norris for one more race, and just sell Oscar Piastri and Valtteri Bottas. Because if I sell Mercedes instead of Ferrari to if I sell McLaren instead of Ferrari to Mercedes, that gives me a bit more funds to work with on this second driver. So it's not just like a Pierre Gasly upgrade. It could maybe be a Nico Hulkenberg, right? Again, Charles Leclerc. But I've also talked about before, I don't like splitting between three teams, which I am here. So even in this case, you know, I'm still splitting between three teams. But I, I could see myself doing something like that, especially if McLaren are struggling. Because then, like, how good is Oscar Piastri? Really, they will still want to push Landon Norris forward, do team orders. They did do team orders for Oscar Piastri when Lando got that five-second penalty to ensure that Lando ended up ahead of Oscar. They told Oscar to back off, uh, so Lando would end up in front of him. So, as long as Lando stays ahead of Oscar, and he's beaten Oscar, like, 11, uh, 11 out of... Like, uh, most of the time in qualifying, the Oscar's only gotten, gotten the, the better of him a handful of times. So, as long as Landon Norris starts ahead of Oscar Piastri, I feel like Piastri's not going to do the dive bombs we saw him do in Monza anymore. Especially not on lap one. So, if Lando starts ahead of Piastri, and he has been better in qualifying than Piastri, can stay ahead, at least then Lando can get points and, and likely be podium contender. But if it's close between, you know, Charles Leclerc, Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, uh, Carlos Sainz, I have to mention him as well, then having Lando and not Oscar Piastri and not McLaren could work out in, in, in my favor. So I don't hate this triple up of three different teams, right? Uh, because I think this sort of lineup could perform well despite triple dipping if that makes sense now to afford something like a nico who's 11.2 million i would actually need this to be carlos Sainz. Uh, i think i can do it with lewis hamilton as well uh yes i can i can do it with lewis hamilton i can't do it with charlotte claire so if if mercedes are looking faster i could do something like this get hamilton in get nico hulkenberg in there um because i mean nico just keeps getting points right if ferrari look better than uh, mercedes but mercedes still look strong you know, and I really, really want Charles Leclerc in there for 10.4 million. Uh, the the only one that really makes sense is is then Yuki Tsunoda. I would definitely pick Yuki Tsunoda over Pierre, over Pierre Gasly. Yuki Tsunoda definitely has some things to prove now that Liam Lawson just popped in and got, got points immediately. Um, and of course, since science is cheaper on, on a science build, I could definitely just uh, afford Nico Hulkenberg in there. I think this is likely. In terms of my Williams assets, they're not going anywhere. I'm keeping Alex Albon and Franco Colapinto likely till the end of the season, unless I need to downgrade Albon to a show or bot dance to afford something else. But this looks good for now. I think I'm actually using all, all three of my transfers. Again, it completely depends on how the pace looks. We're actually getting a couple of practice sessions in, in Mexico. So we'll have to see how good Ferrari look at the altitude. And how good Mercedes look, especially Lewis Hamilton, with those new upgrades. And then if McLaren look to be back to their best or back to their worst. Because if McLaren are back to their best, it's going to be hard selling them. And in the case where McLaren, after some simulations, look the strongest after, you know, free practice, going into the qualifying, I don't see what transfers I make once again. 
maybe you know ferrari to mercedes if mercedes looks super fast and ferrari don't but keeping the triple mclaren just seems like a liability in a sense and i don't think even if mclaren looks good and i i can almost lock this in now right with this much i i cannot really do much with this money right i can only uh upgrade this to to shogun U. so i don't really get an upgrade from doing ferrari to mercedes but even if mclaren looks good and i want to keep them i think i'm likely to sell oscar piastri I think even if McLaren look good, I think I would do something like this. Or, you know, get Mercedes and, and Hamilton in there. And the reason for that is because I think Oscar Piastri's turn in the spotlight for this season is kind of over. Unless Lando completely booms out of qualifying in P17 and, and Piastri puts it on pole. I think Lando Norris will be the preferred driver and they will try their best to close that gap to Max Verstappen in the Drivers' Championship. So I'm not really interested in Piastri as an option anymore for that reason. And if he does well and gets a P2 finish, at least I still have the McLaren driver, uh, the McLaren constructor asset in there. But on this sort of team... I'm at least spreading it out a bit, but still staying on a double dip. So so if McLaren look fastest, and I purpose, preface this by saying, saying fastest, in practice, this is likely my move. Just Piastri out for Leclerc, bring three transfers to Co uh, to Brazil, and, and call it a day. Now, there's one more thing to be said with a team such as this, is that as I'm likely to have two premium drivers from two different teams no matter which strategy i end up going with i'm very unlikely unless like there's some crazy domination shown and, and some crazy numbers shown in the practice sessions if i'm on two different drivers i'm heavily considering using the autopilot chip especially if i still have landon norris in there considering how Max Verstappen is driving or driving him off the track at every possibility uh, that he can. So, at every available possibility. So, from now till the end of the season, I still have my autopilot, I still have my final fix. Every race where I'm not running two premium drivers from the same team, where I assume there is a clear number one favorite, I am considering autopilot heavily. So don't be surprised to see me pop the autopilot in Mexico. Could also be in Brazil. At any point where you see my team looking like this, flying two different anyway, colors. That's the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. I will see you on the deadline stream tomorrow again, two hours before the deadline on Saturday evening early morning or afternoon depending on where you live two hours before you can see it on my channel you can enable notifications so you know when i go live that's where i will finalize my team that's where i will pop the autopilot if i do it that's where you can submit your teams uh, for me to rate and give my opinions on if you value them at all uh anyway again sorry that the video is so late humbly apologize uh but this one is out now i'll see you tomorrow if you're still here, please subscribe.